So here we are at St. Andrew's Church, the oldest standing church in Western Canada. Eh, a little plaque, let's see what it says. St. Andrew's Anglican Church. Beginning in 1828, the Reverend W. Cochran held religious services in the homes of settlers in this area. In 1829, he established a permanent residence at Grand Rapids on the Red River and by 1831 had built a small wooden church. His growing congregation required a larger building and the present stone church, the oldest in Western Canada, was begun in 1845 and completed in 1849. The simple but beautiful building became the center of missionary activity in Rupert's Land and continues to be the focus of an active parish life. So what they mean by Western Canada is Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta and British Columbia. But 1849, that's old. This is all original. I can't get inside, it's padlocked. But we'll take a little quick we'll take a quick little walk around. Hmm. Got like an uh an above ground tomb over here. That's the word I was looking for, tomb. St. Andrew's Parish, St. Andrew's Road, the Parish Church of St. Andrew's, established 1828. Nice. Something tells me this is going to be a really old cemetery. Really old. Archdeacon William Cochran, 1796-1865, laid to rest by the walkway so he could be forever before the settler going up to the Church of God so he may yet speak to the young and old. Kind of cool. Ooh. In memory of Herbert Naylor, son of Reverend C. E. and A. E. Brownlee, drowned in the Red River June 3rd, 1908, aged two years and eight months. Poor little guy. Oh, this one's even worse. June 1896, aged one year and 13 days. Oh man, this is depressing. John N. died December 31st, 1885, aged 7 months. Beatrice M. died March 21st, 1892, aged 7 weeks. Maggie J. died April 1st, 1892, aged 1 year and 9 months. Children of W. L. and J. Taylor. This is getting really depressing. Really, really depressing. Aged 2 years and 3 months. I'm gonna get out of here. This is just too damn depressing. I can't even read that one. Aged 80 years. Nineteen twenty to two thousand eight, nineteen twenty to two thousand and nine. Wow. I wonder if some of these just broke because of age or vandals. Because there are stupid idiot kids who do things like this. Age, I think that says thirty four years. The memory of George, son of James and Hannah. Corrigal. J. 
Just trying to get a better picture of this side of it. Seventy-six years, George Johnston. George Johnston, seventy-six years. Good on you. So all of this is all from 1849. The windows, everything. Got a lot of newer uh, tombstones out there. Not interested in that. Oh, this guy's standing up top. In memory of Alexander Christie, chief trader of the Hudson Bay Company, who died 26 November 1874, aged 54. In memory of Caroline, the beloved wife of Al... In memory of Caroline, the beloved wife of Alexander Christie, who died 22nd June 1867 at aged 42. 1874, 67? Okay. Oh, man. Okay, just mentioning him again. In memory of Alexander Christie, chief trader of the Hudson's Bay Company, who died 19th July 1884, aged 33. Did I see something? Yeah! Alexander, chief of the Hudson's Bay Company who died. Are they purposely trying to mess with me? And that side's blank. Okay. So, uh, Alexander Christie, chief trader of the Hudson's Bay Company, 1874, 54. Oh, Alexander Christie Jr. I see it now. I didn't see it before. Chief trader of the Hudson's Bay Company. July 19th, 1884, age 33. 19th of July. Oh, okay. All right. Margaret born June 30th, 1867. Died January 9th, 1885. Also, Anne Elizabeth, born December 24th, 1861, died April 3rd, 1905. Gone, but not forgotten. There's just too many to explore. This is amazing. Got another old one here toppled over. Sacred to the memory of Matilda Davis, who died December 6, 1873, aged 82 years, perhaps? Oh, we got a big old stone one back here. Kennedy family. In love and memory of Captain William. Okay, in love and memory of left side, Captain William Kennedy, Arctic explorer, born April fourteenth, eighteen thirteen, died January twenty fifth, eighteen ninety. And Elbor Eleanor Eliza Cripps, his wife, born London, England, November second, eighteen twenty five died can't make out that word Overton, Manitoba October October 4th 1913 okay now let's see if we can get a picture of this other side of the church
This is just beautiful stuff here. Let me get farther back here and do a sort of 360 panorama. Oh yeah, that's good for the church right there. There, that's a nice picture. Ooh, got a little lightheaded on that one. Cannot make out most of that's what it says. Do not, we're gonna call it quits for now. Because I gotta walk across the street to the rectory. There's a rectory here that was built around the same time, then was torn apart and rebuilt in I think they said 1980 so we're gonna take a look at that in a moment Greater love hath no man than this. World War II, okay. Greater love hath no man than this. Okay. Whoa, I didn't even see that. In memory of the 2000 plus in unmarked graves. Wow. All right, over to the rectory. By the looks of it, access to the rectory is closed. I think they're only open Saturday and Sundays, which sort of sucks since today is Tuesday. But we can still walk around a bit. It's a private residence, so I will not be trespassing. I know some people would do that, but not this guy. Roar of the Rapids. Speak up, Annie. I can't hear you over the Rapids. No, we aren't going to church school. I'd just like to see the construction. They must have a they must have to dig a deep trench for the foundation of the new stone church. Cochrane is lucky to have so many strong men in his parish used to hard work of the fur trade. With so many forced to retire from the company, they may not have much money to contribute, but they have time and muscle. We better not we better not dally. Or he'll be putting me to work. Okay, if you say so. Grand Rapids Church. What is known as St. Andrew's Church is once simply the Church of the Rapids. With the building of St. Andrew's Dam at Lockport, the Rapids have disappeared. So has the original Red River Frame Church built in 1830. The wooden church was 15.8 meters by 7 meters. With oak rafters and a thatched roof, it had the feel of a tiny cathedral. The wooden church and later the stone church were built by Reverend William Cochrane and his parish members. Cochrane, a member of the Church Missionary England, of, a member of the Church Missionary Society of England, was the founder of the Anglican Mission at the Rapids. His calling was to bring change to those who lived what he thought was the wanton lifestyle of the fur trade. He advocated a practical education religious observance, and European, European agriculture as the means of salvation. Cool, dude. Go explore. I have been. St. Andrew's Church and Rectory are National Historic Sites. 
The church also is a provincial heritage site. You are welcome to discover the history of the two sites. Next stop, Captain Kennedy House, a stone's throw for, down the road. Stop in for tea and bannock. I don't think so. Oh, look at this. You are here. Let's zoom that in a little bit more. There we go. Oh, dear Lord, battery's nearly dead. I'm going to have to go get another battery. Be right back. Just as I said goodbye, the battery died. Okay, we got something way over there. Uh, let's cross club. Let's cross the, the uh, field here. Go across the grass. There's a school right next door, so that's what you're hearing. A lot of happy children. I don't know why, it's uh, school time. God, I love the f colors of the autumn. Okay, oh, there's a lot of reading here. Oh, dear Lord. What have I got myself into? St. Andrew, St. Andrew's Rectory, an impressive sight along the red... St. Andrew's Rectory, an impressive site along the river, St. Andrew's Church is characterized by its limestone construction, steep roof, projecting tower, and wooden steeple. An impressive site along the river, St. Andrew's, or Lower Church, is one of three Anglican churches founded along the Red River in the 1820s. Together with Upper Church, St. John's established 1822, and Middle Church, St. Paul's established 1825. These were the first Protestant missions. These were the first Protestant mission projects in Western Canada. Built of local limestone and wood, St. Andrew's Church and the nearby rectory, Minister's Home, are commemorated for their historic and agricultural significance. Today, St. Andrew's Church is the oldest surviving stone church in Western Canada. The Hudson's Bay Company invited the first church missionary society ministers to Red River here in 1820. Here at Grand Rapids, Reverend William Cochran built and developed the St. Andrew's Mission starting with the wooden buildings, a rectory in 1829 and a church in 1831. These were replaced by the stone church in 1849 and the rectory in 1854. Oh, I had you guys on a walking angle there. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I read online that the rectory was rebuilt in 1980. The Church Missionary Society promoted Christianity and a settled agriculture lifestyle. Along with the usual subjects, practical agriculture skills were taught in the schools, something that should be taught today. The artist's depiction of the artist's depiction of St. Andrew's Mission post-1845 shows church, rectory, schoolhouse, farm buildings, grist mill and fenced agricultural fields. Hmm. The ministers of the Church Missionary Society offered religious services for the Protestant settlers in the new colony and provided education to the children, most of whom were mixed Euro-Indigenous descent. St. Andrew's Church has remained intact and in active use since the completion in 1849. The rectory, however, was completely dismantled in the early 1980s and rebuilt to closely resemble the original. I knew I read that somewhere. Family and house in St. Andrew's Parish, Red River, early 19th century. Oh, it never ends. St. Andrew's Rectory National Historic Site, the first Protestant missionaries arrived in Red River on the request of the Hudson's Bay Company in 1820. The mission at St. Andrew's was founded in 1829. I'll save that for last. Or no, I won't. Erected between 1852 and 1854, this large limestone dwelling housed the rectory of nearby St. Andrew's Church and complemented the massive construction of that building. The rectory built for the Reverend William Cochran was one of the first stone houses in the Red River settlement. Like a number of substantial homes built here for retired officers of the Hudson's Bay Company, it reflects the style and character of important dwellings at company posts. 
In, thi in this way, the rectory provides a good example of the architecture used at Red River. The river tells a story. Along the historic Red River, there are many designated heritage sites. It will help you tell the story of the early Red River colony and its role in the story of our province and our nation. At these sites, memories are preserved and valuable land and cultural resources protected. In, two, in 2007, the Red River was recognized as a heritage river within the Canadian Heritage River System because of its outstanding history for its natural and recreational values. Oh, this is going to take a long time. Okay, St. Peter's Dynever Anglican Church. This provincial designated church was built in 1853 for the Salto and Cree Agricultural Community, which was established here in 1834 and led by the renowned Chief Pequis. Two, I'd like to go here. Lower Fort Gary National Historic Site. This National Historic Site is recognized for its, for its outstanding 19th century stone building for its role as a fur trade center and for its early pro provincial administrative functions. This is also the place where Treaty No. 1 was made in 1871. Twin Oaks National Historic Site or Miss Davis's School of, for Girls built in 1858 by stonemason Duncan McRae and nationally recognized as a fine example of Red River architecture this was the residence for a private girls' school, attended mostly by daughters of Hudson's Bay Company officers. The school was run by Matilda Davis in, until 1873. St. Andrew's Khmer Curtain Dam National Historic Site. Located on the Red River at Lockport, this is the only Khmer Curtain Dam built in North America. Okay! Captain Kennedy House. This outstanding stone house was built in 1866 by Captain William Kennedy, son of a Hudson's Bay Company chief factor and an indigenous woman. Kennedy was a company employee, a missionary, and an Arctic explorer who led two search expeditions for the lost Franklin ships. Don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> the Forks National Historic Site. At the junction of the Red and the Cinnaboyne Rivers, and at the heart of the continent, the Forks saw travelers, traders, and campers for thousands of years. In the early 19th century, the Forks drew permanent settlers forming the center of the Red River Colony and eventually the city of Winnipeg. I helped build that. Thomas Bunn House. This house was built in 1862 for Thomas Bunn, a prominent Red River lawyer and politician. Bunn was an elected representative to Louis Riel's provisional government during the Red River resistance. The provisional heritage site is privately owned. Upper Fort Gary, in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. This original stone gate is the centerpiece of a park marking the site of Upper Fort Gary, the Hudson's Bay Company, Western Trade Headquarters, and the center of the Red River Colony. Grey Nuns Convent National Historic Site. Founded by the Grey Nuns, this is the oldest convent in use in the Prairie Provinces, the first mission house of its kind in the West, and an outstanding example of early Red River frame construction. Rial House National Historic Site, the home of Louis Rial's mother in the location where Louis Rial is commemora commemorated as a person of national historic significance. The site also commemorates Métis River lots, a form of prairie settlements. St. Boniface Cathedral. This large elaborate Roman Catholic cathedral is the third cathedral and fifth church built on this site, where in 1818 Father Joseph Norbert Provence established the first permanent Roman Catholic mission west of the Great Lakes. And St. Andrew's Church, National Historic Site. The stone church and its nearby rectory were one of the earliest Protestant mission projects in Western Canada. Okay, I'm done reading, I'm sorry, but I have other places to be. Actually, there's only a couple more, let's do it. The settlers were comfortable with a seasonal round of travel, but the new missionaries encouraged a settled agriculture life at Red River as the key to steady food supply and stable communities.
Too true, too true. The Red River Colony takes shape. The Red River Colony takes shape. The waters that come together at the confluence of the Red and the Assiniboine Rivers have, al have also brought a flow of travelers, trade goods, and ideas from all directions. In the early 19th century, the beginning of new and wide di widely diverse permanent settlements took shape. The Red River Colony. When two, men, when two intensely competing fur trade companies merged into a streamlined monopoly in 1821, many of the surplus men and their indigenous wives and families set down roots at Red River. In the area they joined First Nations and Métis groups, as well as the families prim primarily Scottish of the 1812 Selkirk settlement. All were adjusting to building new communities in a rapidly changing world. Establishing themselves in wood frame houses on long narrow lots along the river, the people experienced heartbreaking setbacks in the form of the destructive floods, harsh winters and, co and crop failures. Most, most necessarily continued a mixed economy of hunting, gathering, trade and farming. Log Cabin 1870s And that's it, we are done. We are going to go to Lockport next. Take a look at that dam. I don't remember what it was called again, but we're going to go look, take a look at the Lockport Dam. That will be the next video. So until next time, have a good one.